Ishigami Senku, a prodigy with a keen interest in science, is the main character of the anime, and he and his friends are seen experimenting in his school lab at the start of the anime. A short while later, however, Senku is informed by a friend named Okiteju that he would be talking to Ogawa Yuzura about his feelings today. Senku replies as though he doesn't care about Teju's ideas. The love potion he later gives him, however, is said to boost courage, so it increases Teju's chances of being accepted by Yuzura. He declined the potion, though. He doesn't want to be unfaithful to his lover. Yuzura was waiting for Teju on the school grounds, so he headed there. Her rejection of him was predicted by all his classmates who watched from the classroom. Senku, however, does not. He was so confident that Yuzura would accept Teju's confession that he offered to wager 10,000 yen on it. Teju was about to admit his feelings when suddenly, a blinding green light engulfed the world and turned everyone into stone. Surprisingly, only people and pigeons were impacted by the light. Dogs and cats, for example, were not. However, that does not imply that people have perished. They are fully conscious of their surroundings and what is happening to them because their consciousness is still active. Like this, Teju was determined to tell Yuzura how he felt, no matter how long it took. And then, after roughly 37 years, now, the world is entirely different from how it was in the distant past before civilization was developed by humans. Senku abruptly broke free from petrification at this point, only to discover that the world he had known before had vanished. Senku made sharp objects out of stone and wood after realizing he had to act to survive in this strange new world. Then he made a rope out of a tree branch and strung it with wood. And presto, he can use these things to make fire. But if Senku doesn't eat, it will all be for nothing. To hunt animals, he, therefore, made a spear. Unfortunately, his lack of physical strength prevented him from finding anything during his hunting expedition. Senku understood right away that if he continued to behave like a professional hunter, he would eventually starve to death. The result is that he thinks. He built a deer trap and used it to capture the animal. Senku is an expert at building fire, sharpening weapons, and obtaining food. He can't wear leaf panties forever, so the next step is to create shelter and clothing. Enough said, Senku completed the construction of a basic house in a short time. He is now dressed in hip clothing as well. In other words, he already meets the necessities of being a human. Senku is still a human, though, and people cannot exist in isolation. He had already demonstrated how challenging and draining it was to live alone. Additionally, he misses interacting with others. He then goes in search of Teju, a childhood friend who is still petrified. He is still unable to comprehend how to free petrified people. He believed that natural erosion was the reason he was able to survive. But why did he survive while the others perished? After some deliberation, he concluded that there must be an outside factor. Senku recalled being in a cave when he was still terrified. He went back to the cave and later discovered water drops from the ceiling combined with the nitric acid containing guano of the bats. Senku surmised that the nitric acid was what had liberated him from petrification. To support his theory, he tore out a few still petrified strands of his hair and dripped nitric acid on them. Indeed, the stones in his hair can corrode in the presence of nitric acid. Senku began to gather the acid in a small pot out of excitement and then poured it over Teju. But to his surprise, Teju didn't let his fear go away. Likewise, when he attempted to sprinkle it on terrified individuals, Senku was once more forced by the anomaly to search his mind for characteristics that might make him unique. He finally concluded that he was always thinking even when he was terrified. He tells him how long he has been terrified as he counts down the seconds. Senku was revived in April 5738, and the enigmatic light first appeared in 2019. Nitric acid and the mental energy Senku used to think constantly allow him to essentially escape petrification. It also clarifies why his head is where rock erosion begins. Senku was forced to carry the stone Teju to the cave on his back, where he submerged him in acid in the hopes that Teju would survive by using his willpower. Even though Teju may not be the smartest student in his class, he has a strong will to live, particularly because he longs to see Yuzura once more. He was thus liberated from petrification quickly. As soon as he was liberated, Teju covered his crotch with a fashionable pair of leaf-patterned pants. Then, while looking for someone else, he discovered a message Senku had carved onto the tree. Senku provided a hint in the message about where Teju could look for him. As it turned out, Teju found his best friend after following the lead. The reunion was also very heartwarming. However, Teju's presence was extremely beneficial for Senku. He continues to carry out all mental labor, but Teju will take charge of tasks that call for strength. Senku wanted to find a way to rescue the people from petrification as their next strategy. The issue is that not everyone is gifted intellectually like Senku or physically like Teju. Senku came up with the idea of creating a substance called Niddle as a result, which could be produced by combining nitric acid and ethanol. Alcohol, which would be difficult to find in this world, can be used to make ethanol. However, Teju has a suggestion for how they can succeed. They had a lot of wild grapes nearby when he was searching for food, so they might try fermenting them to make alcohol. They made wine out of the grapes after three weeks and heated it to release the ethanol. 
They combined the acid and ethanol before testing the mixture on a petrified swallow. Their research produced positive outcomes. Instantly, the compound was able to revive the swallow. Senku and Teju were thrilled with the discovery and set out to find Yuzuria and set her free. However, as Teju went to pick up the terrified woman, a herd of lions charged at them and forced them to flee while carrying her. They understood they couldn't defeat the lions. However, they are aware of one person who can defeat them, Shishio Tsukasa, a well-known martial artist, and the world's strongest primate. They hurried to free Tsukasa there and then without further delay. It turns out that the moniker's strongest primate is not just a silly one. He used just his hands to defeat the lions. The strongest primate is now Senku and Teju's new ally, and it repays them by going out in search of prey so they can eat. Senku worries about Tsukasa even though he is the strongest person alive now. Additionally, they would be powerless to stop him if he turned evil. Senku therefore secretly prepared to make a weapon if his fears came to pass. Tsukasa is also a human with a past, even though he appears to be the weakest primate to outsiders. Very dark history. While they were at the beach, he told Senku about it. Tsukasa once searched for shells on the beach for his sister when he was a young child. However, a large man suddenly came and beat him while he was out hunting, claiming that he had taken the shells. The incident might have seemed absurd, but it had a significant impact on how he is now. Not everyone, according to Tsukasa, deserved to be freed from petrification, especially the wicked and greedy, who would probably taint the stone world in which they currently reside. He feared that when society eventually stabilized, the powerful and wealthy would once more oppress the powerless, just as they had in the past. He even opposes the return of modern technology because he believes that people will use it to start wars and end the world. Tsukasa believes that it is better to fix the world now than to keep making the same mistakes in the future. With their help, he will create a new world order, so he requests from Senku that only his chosen ones be brought back to life. Senku, however, was unable to support Tsukasa's absurd plan. He wants to restore civilization, a civilization centered on science, and set everyone free, without exception. Two parties with two distinct objectives. Conflict is unavoidably made inevitable by it. As things are getting tense, Teju shows up and unintentionally spills nitric acid, giving Tsukasa the knowledge necessary to save people from petrification. And so, as Senku and he prepared to flee from Tsukasa, he went to check into the nitric acid cave. However, they first set Yuzuria free. They went to a mountain to craft weapons after Yuzuria got back to normal. They intended to produce gunpowder to be used in their weapons. No matter how powerful Tsukasa is, a shot to the head will still cause his death. But since Tsukasa is not a man who only relies on his muscles, it seems difficult to defeat him. And he's smart. He immediately suspected them when he went back to Senku's base camp and neither Senku nor Teju were there. Tsukasa began to run after them as he started to follow their steps. He also didn't need to look because a brief while later, a loud explosion was followed by smoke rising high into the sky. There were no longer any people present. He reasoned that Senku and the others must be the source of the smoke. Tsukasa's prediction came true. The people he was pursuing did produce the smoke. The gunpowder that accidentally exploded while Senku and the others were making it was the source of the smoke. But then suddenly, as if someone were trying to signal them, there was an explosion coming from another direction. But it also meant that in addition to the four of them, someone else was freed from the petrification. However, before they had a chance to consider their options, Tsukasa had reached their location and, to make matters worse, was holding Yuzura hostage. Senku is threatened, and he demands the revival fluid formula from him. Tsukasa would easily be able to kill her if he refused, and he would. Senku is compelled to reveal the revival fluid formula to Tsukasa, including how alcohol is used in its compounding. Once he has the formula, however, he decides to kill Senku because, after all, Senku might pose a threat to his plans for a new world order. Additionally, he witnessed Senku's plans to create a weapon to harm him even though his experiment failed for some absurd reason. He consequently broke Senku's neck with a single blow. Senku, fortunately, has Teju. As soon as Teju realized his friend was in danger, he ignited the remaining gunpowder, using the ensuing smoke to transport Senku and Yuzuraha away. When he felt secure, he attempted to provide Senku with first aid. But his efforts were unsuccessful. Teju didn't want to give up, though, until he realized that there was still a small portion of Senku's nape that was petrified. He searched for a way to save Senku. Without a second thought, he sprayed revival fluid on it, causing the stone to break as the nerves in his neck began to heal. Senku eventually stood up and made a full recovery. After narrowly escaping death, Senku quickly came up with a new strategy to deal with Tsukasa. To spy on Tsukasa, he asks Teju and Yuzura to pretend to be joining him. Senku himself will search for the person who initially sent the smoke signal. After that, they split up to complete their missions. This also signals the start of Senku and Tsukasa's efforts to accomplish their objectives. He wants to build a kingdom that is centered on science, whereas Tsukasa wants to build an empire based on his ideals, which are based on strength and power. Senku parted ways with Teju and Yuzura and went on the hunt for the maker of the smoke sign. Tsukasa ultimately discovered the person first, who turned out to be a girl by the name of Kohaku. She perceived Tsukasa to be a dangerous man after seeing how he was attempting to kill Senku and attacked him right away. 
Tsukasa tries to determine her possible origins as he fights Kohaku. She does sound strange because she refers to science as magic and believes it to be magic, which suggests that she is a primitive person rather than a modern person who has just emerged from petrification. Tsukasa became aware of this and chose not to kill her. After all, he only targets those who support science and desire a return to the status quo. Tsukasa cut down a tree to trap her, and as she was crushed by the tree, she was unable to move. Fortunately, Senku arrived at the scene after Tsukasa had left and discovered Kohaku. The large tree was too heavy for him to move, so he created a pulley to lift it and save her. Kohaku then drove her to the village where she resided, where two people, Kinru and Jinru, stood watch at the entrance. Both of those people and her did not comprehend science. Senku is surprised to learn that one of the villagers has a passion for science. Chrome is his name. Chrome has always enjoyed gathering various stones to experiment with and if the experiment worked, he proudly referred to it as magic. Senku entered Chrome's lab right away and asked to be allowed to look over various scientific tools and healing plants. Chrome acknowledged that he had intentionally gathered the medicinal plants. He is looking for treatment for Kohaku's sister Ruri, the village chief's daughter, who has a congenital illness. Ruri had surrendered to her illness, but Kohaku and Chrome had not. Senku believed that antibiotics might be able to treat Ruri's illness. But even for him, creating antibiotics in this primitive manner is difficult. Additionally, they must construct the tools required to complete the various challenging stages. Antibiotic production is still possible, though. Iron had to be created first. To gather iron sand, Senku, Kohaku, Chrome, and another villager named Suika went to a nearby river. The iron sand must then be heated in the furnace to a temperature of 1,500 degrees after it has accumulated to enough. Unfortunately, the four of them alone couldn't heat the furnace, they needed assistance from the locals. Naturally, Senku and the others couldn't force them to work for free. They needed the plan to convince the locals, and he had an excellent one. He would sway the locals by preparing foods from the modern era that they had never tried before. Senku and the others then began gathering the food's ingredients. They gather asparagus fern and grind it into flour. Then they add eggs and continue stirring until a dough forms. Before boiling in a hot pot, the dough needs to be separated into thin strips. They use fish and chicken broth to make the sauce. They then add meat to it as a finishing touch. What do you suppose they produce? Ramen, naturally. Yes, it makes perfect sense that Senku would choose to make ramen. Who could say no to ramen? Everyone enjoys it, even the locals. However, just as everyone was enjoying their ramen, a shady character appeared out of nowhere. Additionally, that individual is holding a bowl of ramen. A Sajiri Jen, a contemporary human who was freed from petrification by Tsukasa, turns out to be that person. He was a magician in a past life. That explains how he was able to appear in that manner out of the blue and sneak a bowl of ramen. Nevertheless, he visited the village to observe and determine whether Senku was still alive. But secretly, he respects Senku. Senku and the others permitted him to remain in the village because they now needed to make iron for more crucial purposes. To cut a long story short, after they were successful in producing iron, they went on to produce electricity generators. To do this, they wrapped an iron rod in copper, raised it above the ground, and struck it with lightning which turned it into a strong magnet. Later, the magnets were employed as power sources. Senku demonstrated electricity to everyone later that evening. Those who witnessed it were amazed as he scaled the house's roof and turned on the lamp with electricity. But then something unexpected occurred. Jen was attacked by a villager while she was by herself in the forest, suffering serious injuries. He was well taken care of by Senku and his friends, and he was so moved by their kindness that he chose to defect to Senku's science kingdom. As suggested by Jen, he asked Senku to prepare a bottle of coke for him. After the wound had healed a few days later, Jen went straight back to Tsukasa's home. But this time, he works with Teju and Yuzura as Senku's spies. Senku and the others eventually identify the attacker who attacked Jen after conducting their investigation. After Kohaku, he is Magma, the strongest fighter in the community. He is also the best candidate to lead the village, in addition to everything else. The village has a custom of holding a fighting competition, with the winner earning the right to become the head of the community and wed Ruri. Magma lost to Kohaku in the previous tournament, which was held the previous year. However, Kohaku's victory is disregarded because she is Ruri's sister. As a result, the competition would be repeated this year with Magma once again being a strong contender for the title. However, Senku and his friends don't want Magma to win because if he does and marries Ruri, their plan to heal her will be even more challenging. Magma didn't appear to be a man who would welcome visitors to his wife's home. So, they started splitting up the tasks. While Senku and Chrome continue to manufacture antibiotics, Kinru and Jinru will train with Kohaku. Senku is currently in need of a glass case. He took the time to make Suika, who was nearsighted, glasses before they started on the container though. And to make matters simpler, he attached the glasses to the mask she frequently wore. She wept joyfully because she could see how beautiful the surroundings were. Senku and Chrome continued to work on creating glass cases after making glasses for Suika. But sadly, the results of their work are always disastrous. 
Chrome immediately thought of a resident with great hand dexterity. He is Keisuke, an imposing senior who created the bridge and other infrastructure for the community. Senku and Chrome were able to create what they needed with the assistance of that tough old man. Making sulfuric acid, a chemical compound that contains poison is the next step. Senku, however, is unaffected by this since he already understands what a mask is. They were able to obtain sulfuric acid from its source without much difficulty. Senku and Chrome still require the ingredients sake to complete their recipe. However, they had no plans to include it in Ruri's medication. Senku only wanted the locals to be able to enjoy sake to mark the conclusion of the competition. The village warriors engaged in combat the following day. The competitors were Kohaku, Senku, Chrome, Jinru, and Kinru. Kohaku, however, is ultimately unable to take part in the competition because Magma has already carried out his cunning plan to have her disqualified. He kidnaps Suika and hides her before the competition, making Kohaku search for her. Since Suika was the best fighter the village had, she oversaw finding her. The competition then started without waiting for Kohaku to show up, with Magma taking on Kinru in the opening match. Kinru is a powerful and skilled combatant. He shares the same fatal flaw as Suika, which is nearsightedness. Fortunately, Suika returned at the ideal moment. She threw her mask at Kinru when she saw him fighting so he could take it. By dodging all of Magma's attacks while wearing the mask, Kinru was able to corner him after launching a counterattack. Magma complained to the referee for allowing Kinru to wear a mask as if realizing he couldn't defeat his opponent. He immediately turned to the referee after raising his objection to inquire if he was permitted to wear a mask. However, Magma had been waiting for just that. He was caught off guard, and Magma slammed into him from behind. Magma ultimately prevailed in the battle thanks to his devious strategies. In the second fight, Chrome was successful in defeating his opponent. Then, in the third fight, Senku, who was supposed to face Kohaku, won because she had yet to return to the arena. Magma must play Chrome in the semifinals. He was no match for the cunning man. Magma was physically much stronger than Chrome, making their fight appear more like torture than a fair contest. Chrome, however, eventually discovered a way to defeat Magma using Suika's glasses and sunlight after his body had already been severely damaged. He scorched Magma's body, causing him to scream in the heat of the flames and giving him the advantage in the battle. Senku also prevailed in the semifinal match, so Chrome and Senku squared off in the championship match. Chrome, however, didn't have the energy to fight because it appears that his fight with Magma left him with serious injuries. Senku ultimately prevailed in that tournament. As a result, he was immediately named the village leader. Everyone is surprised by what happened. He had no choice and immediately become Rory's husband. He just marries Ruri and the village will become his. Then act like a psycho and immediately ask for the village's sake. Then immediately divorce Ruri. Everyone was surprised by his insane decision. Senku processed the medication for Ruri after the match and gave it to her as soon as it was prepared. For the following few days, he kept giving her the medication until she finally felt better. The villagers trusted Senku even more because of his morals and tournament triumph. They all concurred that he should become the new village chief. Additionally, he practically has a right to be familiar with the village's history as the chief. However, what Ruri told him about the village's past made him shudder in disbelief. It turns out that the village shares his last name, Ishigami, with the name. What happened, then? Why does the village have the same name as Senku? We have to go back to just before the petrification incident to find out. Ishigami by Akuya, Senku's father, served as a representative astronaut for Japan at that time. He was aboard the International Space Station with five other people when the petrification incident took place. Lillian Weinberg, Shamil, Daria, Yakov, and Connie made up a group of five. They could only watch as a strange green light engulfed the Earth from space. They decide to go back to Earth out of worry, but when they do, they discover everyone has been frozen. They had no idea if other people were still alive, and they had no idea how to restore normalcy to the situation. As a result, they make an effort to get by on just the six of them. They created a village, copied it, and eventually increased its population to become Ishigami Village. Senku now realized that all the villagers in front of him, including his father, were descended from the six astronauts. The election of a new village chief is currently being celebrated by all the villagers. However, Ruri takes Senku to their ancestors' graves during the celebration and reads him a letter from Bayakuya who is confident Senku will come back to life someday. So, to save mankind, he gave Senku the order to rebuild civilization. Senku meets Jen when he gets back to the village, and Jen tells him that the Tsukasa Empire has sent troops to occupy Ishigami village. They did indeed arrive to attack a short while later, led by Hayaga, Tsukasa's right-hand man. Similar to Tsukasa, Hayaga is chosen to command the troops because of his outstanding fighting skills. Senku, however, already has a strategy for dealing with them, albeit a short-term one. He pretended that the Science Kingdom had produced a lot of weapons and used the remaining gunpowder to scare the invaders away. Tsukasa's troops decided to temporarily retreat after becoming alarmed after hearing that. Senku knows that if a storm comes, Tsukasa's troops will attack once more since the storm will render weapons useless. He, therefore, made new weapons, including the katana, with the time that was left. The inhabitants of the Science Kingdom were able to disarm the invaders' stone weapons as soon as the battle started thanks to the fighting prowess of Kohaku, Magma, Kinru 
and the others. However, it doesn't imply that Hayauga has given up. To give them time to launch a surprise attack, he gave one of his men, Hamura, the order to set fire to the village and the bridge. Suika steps up to lure Tsukasa's troops to the sulfuric acid source in this precarious situation. Senku and Kohaku immediately followed her with masks as if realizing her plan. The war was ultimately won by the Kingdom of Science after many of Tsukasa's soldiers perished from breathing in sulfuric acid's poisonous gas. By scaling a tall tree to get away from the deadly gas, Hayaba and Hamura were able to save themselves. Despite suffering a humiliating loss in the war with the Science Kingdom, the Tsukasa Empire was not destroyed. Senku was aware that they would launch another assault in retaliation. He intended to make calls in anticipation of a future attack by Tsukasa's forces. He wanted to build guns, but he was short on supplies because he needed shells and nitric acid to make gunpowder. The nitric acid cavern was now ruled by the Tsukasa Empire. As a result, Senku was forced to alter his plan of action. He decided to produce telephones instead of firearms because he believed they were crucial weapons. One could easily perform the role of a spy just by using that tool. They can sneak into enemy territory, look into their defenses, and report back to Senku as soon as they discover any vulnerabilities. Of course, making a phone call alone is a time-consuming and difficult process. Senku, however, had to construct a water wheel that was coupled with a generator to keep the story brief. They could then construct a hydroelectric power plant, which is a crucial part of a phone to function. They had to also produce batteries, light bulbs, and electrical storage containers, so it didn't end there. Making these items served as a light source for them as they excavated in the pitch black caverns that contained the metal that could withstand the most heat, tungsten. Senku and the citizens of the Kingdom of Science couldn't create a cell phone until they had acquired all the necessary supplies and tools. For more anime recap, click here to subscribe and watch more. Thanks for watching.